arriving here now, I invite you to close the eyes if that is available and safe and comfortable for you now. And we open this space, this space of spiraling within, spiraling within this present moment with the invitational sound of the bell Allowing and inviting the whole self, the whole multi-dimensional light being self to fully arrive here if that is what you so choose. Allowing everything from the past moments, hours, days, and even years Float away with each exhale, arriving, arriving, now, opening the eyes and joining us in this space. I'm paling and it's such a joy to be here with you and to be here with my beautiful guest. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, my name's Michaela, and I'm a messenger of love. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, I love that. I love thank that so you. much. <laughs> thank you, I was trying to think of all the things I could say, and I feel like that sums it all up. <laughs> and just based on my experience of you and with you, that is absolutely true. You are such a messenger of love. Thank you. Oh, so and we're are you. Connect- oh, we are yeah. all, we are each and all yes. messengers of love. Oh. Yes, exactly. And it's so, I'm honestly, I'm so happy to be here with you because this is really our, this is only our second conversation live. It's like FaceTime, face to face. I know. And it's so special because, so Elise, my first guest on this podcast, this wonderful podcast, She, who is my voice teacher and our mutual friend, introduced us and connected us and just such a divine synchronicity, divine alignment. And I felt like just from the moment we even messaged, like, I feel like even just from the moment that Elise told me about you or just mentioned you, I was just like, there, there's something here. Yeah, exactly. I feel the same way. Her and I were out at dinner and I was talking about who knows what. <laughs> and she was like, oh. uh, she was like, one of my students, y'all would, y'all would get along so well. I have to introduce y'all. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't know what to think at first, but I was like, why not? And so yeah. it really did feel like such a, because I feel like usually when people first interact on the phone and they've been, it was like a blind friend date. <laughs> it was. But thankfully, I feel like it was a good blind friend date. It really was. And it was one of those connections where, and that's the beauty of soul recognition, where mm-hmm. I just recognized you. Like you were familiar yeah. to me from yeah. wherever we've saying. traveled and wherever we've experienced eons of journeying in the stars together. Like, yeah, so special to reconnect here and now. Absolutely. And so we were just before, before we clicked record, we definitely, mm-hmm. there were lots of energy, <laughs> there were lots of energies <laughs> present. We had a bit of a kerfuffle and now we're here. We're centered. <laughs> And something that we briefly touched upon, you were talking about the soul, was it the solar eclipse? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So, um, one of the things I love and love sharing is astrology. That's kind of, um, my biggest outlet and I really have a, an eye for it. And I feel like I kind of channel whenever I get into astrology. So that's something that I've really been focusing on over the last couple of years. And um, so 
I'm about to also launch, launch a podcast, and so I'm waiting specifically until the astrology is fantastic for it. And <laughs> that is, um, so it's April 5th today, and this will be on April 30th. There is a new moon solar eclipse at 10 degrees Taurus, and it is going into business, and it's all about uh, rebuilding it's manifesting your vision you know your vision for your life and it's this powerful new beginning that is just such a beautiful manifestation um and it depends on where taurus is in your chart that is really the the area of life that this will begin in so for me it's my um seventh house of relationships so this is perfect for business partnerships and um, starting something within uh, like more personal relationships and business deals, that kind of thing. So, um, if you know your rising sign, I can tell you <laughs> what, there, I don't know how familiar you are with your chart. There are tears in my eyes because April 30th is my 25th birthday. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> April 30th is my 25th birthday and it just feels so aligned with everything you're saying yes. like literally since april began i even from the first two conversations of this podcast last week like i am mm -hmm. an entirely different oh, yeah. being i've like evolved it and it's not it's evolved but it feels like i'm finally myself and i there have yeah. been definitely moments where i've said that in my journey cuz it's like i've i've been I'm getting chills i think over yeah, over the past two years i've been like collecting these aspects and do you know what i've been mm -hmm. doing i've still been in some ways in the separation consciousness belief or paradigm that I need to enmesh with other people's energies. I need to absorb or learn from others in order to be myself. And what I'm realizing in the past literally five days is, no, it's just me. It just comes from within me. And I don't need to consume information in order to create. I don't need to continuously go through these deaths the number of death experiences well the number of death experiences i've i've chosen to cycle through and it literally it's funny that this pot it's called spiraling within because it's like i've been spiraling in place but now yeah. it's like the spiral has turned the full multi-dimensional expression of itself which is of me and the April 30th, the solar eclipse that you're talking about, the new, the fact that it's a new moon too, and all of these things, yeah. like the fact that it's new moon and solar eclipse. And so it's like solar feminine energy, really embodying solar feminine yeah. energy and lunar masculine, and then the divine union of both. And it's like, it just very much feels like this is the beginning of the rest of my life. And yeah. each moment is that, but the the heightened potency of it just feels super resonant for me so yes yeah. my my taurus is my sun and then i'm virgo ascendant and what is my moon aquarius moon but then in interestingly in vedic astrology my ascendant is leo okay so i'm uh i'm your opposite so i'm a scorpio sun and i'm a pisces moon but in vedic i'm an aquarius moon Mm -hmm. And I am a Libra rising. So Libra. what's interesting, though, is um, so the sun, so it's a it's a new moon solar eclipse. And so the sun is lining up with the moon at 10 degrees Taurus. And then you um, or the earth is going to be at 10 degrees Scorpio. And we're in this phase of these like Scorpio Taurus uh, solar and lunar eclipses. Uh, I think it's like a year and a half long phase of that. And um, it was in Gemini and Sagittarius a few years ago. So a lot of people with Gemini and Sagittarius um, suns or major signs, they were really feeling this, um, especially if your North node or South node is in um, Scorpio or Taurus, which if you're around 27, 28, uh, no, I think probably 27, 26, um, for those people listening, their 
north node and south node so point of destiny and past life like where you came from energy it's all being activated and turned up and this is like the our generation is the pluto and scorpio generation so it's like all of these major transformations and it's like this major rebuilding and we're literally in this cycle of like society as we know it and our own identities as we know it are being just like burned away but it's this beautiful cleansing fire and just from that ash we're rebuilt like the new seeds of life are being planted what's always meant to have been here is like flourishing and coming up because that cleansing fire took out all the weeds and so i've seen it with myself i've seen it with so many other people just these radical and rapid transformations and just really coming back to ourselves because you're absolutely right where we our whole life have been programmed that we need this to feel good we need this outside of ourselves. we need a relationship like this it's like all of these things that you need or if you aren't doing them you're not you're not a you're not right as a person or you're not good enough and all of these external lies and we've always had this inner knowing like since we were a child of what was right and what felt good and it's like we've been indoctrinated to mistrust that voice inside of us but so many people are coming back to it and spiraling within and i see it as like like the tsunami wave that's happened and it's like crashed into us and it's like knocking off all the inauthentic pieces of ourselves mm. that we like put on and then it like cleansed us and from the sand, we're like digging up and digging out all of the pieces that we abandoned of ourselves and we're putting them back on and we're just mm. coming out, like realizing that mm. we always had what we needed. I just like saw that vision the other day and I was like, yes. <laughs> Oh, I love that. And just as you're saying the, the putting the pieces back on, cause there is, it's kind of, that perspective or experience of the soul or the essence being fragmented. Mm -hmm. If in my experience, it's like the fragmentation is only in the perspective that it's fragmented because when we zoom out our consciousness, it's like, it's all there. Everything is yeah. already within us. And it's, and so that's what I mean really in separation consciousness. It's the consciousness, the, the lens that we look through is perceiving things as being separate it's perceiving yes. individuals people beings memories lives and these aspects of ourselves as being separate and the beautiful thing is all of the separation gets to be included within the unity within the oneness it's not about rejecting or abandoning or cleansing or even releasing oh sorry yes yes to cleansing because cleansing i feel resonates with for me the alignment it's kind mm -hmm. of like bringing it into inclusion and alignment yeah. and and i think that there was this that i was experiencing this emphasis around letting go and releasing mm -hmm. and um purging these things that maybe shouldn't be there and it's kind of a there's a nuance to it because it's mm -hmm. like when we are actually aligning, as you're saying, spiraling within ourselves and our true essence and remembering that inner voice, that inner wisdom that's always been there, naturally there are things that do fall away. There mm -hmm. are things that do fall away and, and are released because we're shifting into our true vibration, <laughs> really mm -hmm. the, the vibration, the essence that we are here to, to resonate in. And that vibration doesn't resonate with all things. It's yeah. like I, for example, and I've known this for a while, but just certain TV show, like TV shows with violence or really intense noises, even just something was on the TV with my mom the other day and it was 
oh, I think it was like some random is this cake show. And it's a it's a con- competition show where you guess if it's cake. But basically, you know when they add the soundtrack, the music to TV shows where it's like dun 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 dun. Even me doing that, I'm like, I, I scrunch yeah. into myself because that suspense, that anticipation. I'm a mm. I'm a skip forwarder. I'm I take quantum leaps in my TV viewing. <laughs> Yes. I jump to the end. I'm like, I take a very non-linear spiralic journey yeah. through experiencing things because I'm like, I don't need to, I, it does not align with my vibrational autonomy to sit through the anticipation of what's going to happen. And yeah. isn't it so interesting that that sound and sound has such a power and soundtracks oh. like it, yeah absolutely so i'm yeah. hypersensitive so um mm. i <laughs> so i have a i have a boyfriend who's a doctor if he's listening i love you honey um, <laughs> <laughs> and so he's a biomedical engineer but he he got his md and he's very like analytical and all those things and um I've always been hypersensitive, but we've been friends for over a year and he didn't realize how bad it was till, um, we started staying with each other on the weekends and stuff like that. And, uh, he, he really realized <laughs> he was up and moving in the morning and I just noise is so disrupted to me. And especially first thing in the morning, like I need my day to, like start like nature starts in the morning just slow beautiful bright like yeah <laughs> like quiet but maybe some birds <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's it <laughs> like thunderstorms are in the afternoon for a reason <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i mean it was i think some point in 2020 when i specifically got an alarm clock now i i, I don't use any alarm i just kind of wake mm-hmm. up when i wake up but there's yeah. a specific sunrise alarm clock. Yeah, I have it. They, do you have it? Yes. yes. And, that, and then it wakes you up with the birds and it slowly yes. goes from, from dim to bright. And it's just such a gentle yep. way of waking up. Yes. And that's, that's kind of knowing the self and knowing what yeah. environment is conducive to supporting our wholeness. And I love... I've that word has really been striking a chord with me, conducive. Like thinking about yeah. environments mm-hmm. that are conducive because con- it's literally conductivity. It's yeah. what environment supports me conducting as the me that I am and mm-hmm. the energy pathways, the flow, and all yes. of those fun, magical things. <laughs> yeah, I use it yeah. all the time, yeah. <laughs> conducive. And yes. It, yeah, it... Yes, and that's what... Uh... So I mentioned he was a doctor for a reason. So he wanted, Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot for a second, Um, (laughs) but he was telling me like, you know, you should see an audiologist about this Mm. and all of that. And I was like, no, (laughs) it's just me and I'm going to wake up peacefully. Uh, Yeah, maybe I do need to, but I just feel like certain things like we resonate with or we don't. And that's okay if we're different Mm -hmm. and that's okay if if that bothers me, that's fine. If something bothers him, like I'll try to accommodate within re- like within reason. And I, I, like he does the same. And I just feel like we feel so constricted and like we can't express ourselves how we are, or there has to be something wrong if we're hypersensitive or whatever. And I just think it's a load of crap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even even the word hypersensitive, right? Mm-hmm. The fact that it is hype, hyper relative to what? Is it yeah. hypersensitive relative to our past embodied experience of sensitivity? Is it hypersensitive to relative to kind of some type of normative definition of how sensitive one should or should not be in order yeah. to be considered sensitive and ultimately, you know, these are just hypotheticals that the answers are for each of us to even discern. And yeah, in terms of hypersensitivity, I think what it does for me is it just like in the language of higher and lower consciousness and Mm -hmm. like higher vibration or lower vibrations on some level, there is a 
like it is the simply the the quantum energetics of it or the energetics of the the speed of the frequency of the the waves of the energy that there are slower vibrations and there are quicker vibrations and those are we experience those differently just like a, a note on the high end of the piano sounds and is felt differently than a note on the low end mm-hmm. and in terms of that there can be it's kind of appreciating that and at the same time parsing out cleansing away with that wonderful flame and fire any hierarchy any perceptions of linearity and hierarchy that it is better to be higher or hyper or worse to be less or that just kind of removing anything around lack or superiority or inferiority or one being good or bad because what is beautiful and what you're sharing is that it is it's uniquely you like Mm -hmm. to you that is your unique experience and for me different sounds you know we experience all things uniquely according to us and that hypersensitivity I'm curious like do you experience clear audience is that like a is that yep yep so that's that's one thing is like I I love being hypersensitive because how I fell into this uh the spiritual journey was um I think I've shared with you before but for those listening I um had a friend pass away I was working in construction I um had all of these like really traumatic and isolating things it mm-hmm. happened back to back like my grandmother got diagnosed with cancer and it's just like all of these really hard things. I was so alone during all of it. And um, one of my best friends growing up, he lived down the street from me. He um, passed away in uh, 2020. And it just sent me in this, um, and he's not the first friend I've lost. And I was just out in the middle of, the, of nowhere working my life away and it just sent me into this like spiral within and there was a Mm. whole lot of I I didn't I couldn't find anything you know I couldn't find purpose I couldn't find uh motivation I was just like what's the point like what is going on like what is my life what is what am I supposed to be doing and I just had all of these questions, but I felt like I had nothing or no one to answer them. You know, I felt very Mm. disconnected um, in all sense of the word. Like when everyone else's life was slowing down because they were in COVID lockdown, I was working 80 plus hours a week. Mm. And it's just like, everything was just off for me. And um, I was driving down the road one day and I heard look up mediumship podcasts and I was like why did I just think that that's weird and I was like I bet that's a lot of bs and so then I looked one up and started listening to it and um the podcast host her and I had a lot in common um and I had all of these weird coincidences as a kid that I just always called it like quote unquote coincidences. And Mm. I would always joke like, oh yeah, I'm psychic. (laughs) (laughs) Because I thought like weird. Oh, the rain thing. The rain thing. Remind us about the rain. Don't you, that you can predict the rain. Oh, or you you yeah. sense you're this you're so tuned fun. to the rain yes okay yeah so whenever I was in construction um so I would freak out my <laughs> our QAQC guy and um what's QAQC uh quality assurance quality mm-hmm. control so gotcha. we would have to work alongside each other I was an environmental manager on solar farm construction sites and we would have to go out in the field and inspect the sediment basins to make sure that the civil contractor built them to spec. And so him and I would do it together. And we were on a couple projects together. So we knew each other very well. He's this man from Trinidad who had um, this really spiritual experience um, because he was in a coma for like two weeks. Mm. It's a crazy story. He's incredible. 
um, I thought it was really weird when I first met him, but <laughs> now he's like, uh, I call him Ray of Sunshine. His name's Aww. Ray. But it was, he wasn't weird. I just was not, I was unconscious. <laughs> like, uh, um, but, uh, oh yeah. So we, we would go out in the truck and one day I was like, oh, Ray, I can make clouds disappear. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I can make clouds disappear. And he was like, Mickey, you're nuts. <laughs> and I was like, no, what? And I would point to a cloud and I'd be like, watch that one. It's going to disappear. And all the other clouds would stay the same. And I'd focus on the cloud and it would disappear. And he was just like, what? Like, he was like, no. And I was like, you can do it too. Like, and so I had him do it. But it became this running joke uh, in our office because they would be freaking out about the weather. And if anybody needed to freak out about the weather, it was me because I was the mm -hmm. environmental manager and my crew worked for sediment and erosion control. And I wanted to make sure we didn't have any sediment releases or any kind of problems. Um, but I remember one day a hurricane was coming through and we were estimated to have like 1.9 inches of rain within like an hour or two. Wow. And I looked at our project manager and I was like, nope, it's going to rain 0.1 inch and it's going to be slow and steady over a couple hours, but it's not going to like flash rain or rain quickly. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be like a high velocity. We're going to be fine. And he was like, you're crazy. And I was like, I promise. And so we all left because it was about to hurricane and the surrounding area everywhere got between like 1.3 and 1.9 inches of rain our job site we have like a little weather station on it yeah. got 0.1 inches of rain <laughs> and it was slow and steady the entire time <gasps> and so they would always be like Michaela do your anti-rain dance or whatever you do because like, <laughs> it would happen uh, over and over again because yeah I forgot to like like say my little prayer about it <laughs> then it would rain really hard and so I was like oh I gotta remember <laughs> yeah it's intention absolutely and where do you feel like you're or hmm because what I'm really inspired by right now is the confidence with which you kind of were stating that and just in terms of the timeline of your journey this was before or after the mediumship podcast Claire audience. This was before, right? Oh, that was, so that was after. So oh, that, that was gave after. me a lot of, yeah. So that okay. gave me a lot of confidence. So I listened to, I started listening to that podcast in November of 20, uh, 2020. And then May of 21, I took this course. Um, so it was right around the same time I was taking this course. And, yeah. Um, it was uh, a course for mediumship by the woman who, um, had the podcast and so while I was going through that and I was just a spiritual newbie and I, I mean I mm -hmm. still am that's kind of like the whole point of my podcast is like diving into different niches and stuff and for yeah. me to learn along with the listener you know and grow along with the listener but like I I was the probably the greenest one in our class and um the first day of class, the girl who, uh, who's, she's like this famous medium had her own TV show and she had us introduce ourselves and she looked at me and she was like, you're going to be doing this for thousands of people one day. And I was like, yeah, right lady. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I was kind of like, what? <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was really excited. I was so excited, but, uh, but I was also scared. Like, lack of a better word I was scared shitless because I was yeah. like I like I'm from Alabama <laughs> so I really had to learn um how to be myself again authentically mm. that's like the journey I've been on is you know connecting with spirit and loved ones and angels and all of that just comes so naturally to me mm. and I, because it, it's who I am. I mean, my mm. birthday is 11, 11 for crying out loud. <laughs> like, but I grew up in a place where it's not okay. You know, like it's not okay to be like, 
if you talk to spirits, you're talking to to the devil, you know, back mm. home. And it's like, if you're like, do you have discernment? Do you like all of these things got like thrown at me, like when loved ones started finding out and it's like, mm. yes. Oh, like, so they, they, they confronted you. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't this, um, my mom and dad, so they're divorced and they met as youth ministers, um, in college mm. and, um, they both are so spiritual and so secretive about it. Um, and, uh, well, my mom's not really secretive about it. So she's in an Anglican church and my dad, um, he's like really into like quantum physics and like Dr. Joe Dispenza and like all yeah. this stuff. And uh, I love it. Uh, he used to like feed me books. Like, uh, I have this book on Atlantis that he gave me and mm. like he used to like tell me about tapping cause I had a lot of health issues as a, as a kid. And, um, he was always kind of trying, I think he like saw it in me. And so Ooh, he was yeah, always all those trying little to push seeds. it. Yeah. And so like they both were supportive. Like my mom was like, oh, I want to make sure you're not like talking to familiar spirits and like all this stuff. I actually mm -hmm. had her go to a mediumship event where she saw the woman who uh, I like trained with where she saw her um yeah give reading so she was more comfortable with it and she was like not for me but like I support you that kind of thing mm -hmm. and um my dad <laughs> I love my dad oh, I love both of them but my dad's so cute <laughs> he was like maybe, maybe you could like uh maybe you could you know go by a pseudo name or <laughs> mm -hmm. and I was like yeah like whenever I was yeah. really timid when I first started and um now I'm like screw that like now I'm like posting on Facebook like go follow my Instagram account even though I hardly ever post <laughs> yeah but, and I've changed it from like mediumship or astrology or whatever mm -hmm. to just messenger of love because any outlet I choose to um Cause really, I think I'm, I'm a channel essentially. And, mm -hmm. uh, my job is to tune my body and my mind in a way that I can kind of be the vector through which like love pours through. So whether that's in the form of someone's loved one that's crossed whether that's in the form of an angel or a spirit guide or someone's pet or, um, or yeah. just looking at your birth chart and being able to interpret that and uh maybe like your higher self as well you know so learning um that's been what i've been working on this past like year and a half is um regaining the confidence and trusting myself and knowing trusting that voice in me because that mm. voice in me is what led me to all of this yeah. and like you can always rely on that voice and yeah. it's the lies come from the outside and mm. there's a difference between the solar knowing and the mind knowing because mm -hmm. the mind is programmable the soul is not the soul mm. is authentic the soul is like your whole expression incarnate you know and the mind is this programmable thing of the body and so learning to, I call it, uh, I call them, what do I call them? I don't know, I'm going like, um, oh, like soul burning desires. So mm. when you have that like soul burning desire yeah. and you're just like on fire about something and that's the energy that propels you forward, that makes you do things. And it's like the things you know that you have to do, that's your soul speaking to you. That's this, your soul animating you to go and do mm. it and so like trusting our bodies trusting our reactions to things like if something makes me angry what is it telling me about me or mm -hmm. my beliefs so what is it telling me about how i respond you know it's like all the external stuff is just the informer of the internal you know it yeah absolutely and it prods 
so that we can have these conversations with ourselves. So I've, I've talked to myself a lot <laughs> in the past and I hope to always continue to do that, but I hope yeah. that other people are, are doing that and really counseling themselves. I was reading um, uh, Untamed by Glennon Doyle recently. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of it or read it? I read it in, I think I read it in 2020 and it was, or whenever it came out and it was, it's amazing. Yeah, I felt like she was like my soul sister while I was reading Aww. it. So I was just like, this is exactly how I feel about literally everything. <laughs> and so like, because I, um, like I dated a girl in college. So like I went through a similar struggle with that. And like now I have an amazing boyfriend, but like, I'm like, who cares who I decide mm -hmm. to love? And like, I'm just me and yeah. I can recognize a beautiful soul, you know, whenever I see one. And it's just like honoring ourselves and trusting ourselves is so important. Mm. And when we have confidence, we also inspire other people to have confidence in themselves. And so that's what I think is so important is that we all have this unique gift. Um, it, like, and they're all so different and they're meant to mm -hmm. be different, you know? Like all the parts of the whole are different parts of the same whole, but we're all mm -hmm. the whole. And it's just think of like a giant machine, like, like we're all operate, we all have our different parts and our unique expressions, but they're all beautiful. They're all unique. They're mm -hmm. all necessary and they're all needed. And there's this external lie of you can't be who you were born to be. You have to be who society says you are. And I just, it's, I know it's my mission to be a messenger of love and a, professional cheerleader, a motivator, mm. just a reminder that like to be who you are, like remember who you yeah. are, you know? Yeah. Sorry, I just everything I mean, <laughs> everything everything I, I was like, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> there were I so like many synchronicities. <laughs> you hardly, I hardly talk. hardly talk, but then when I go, like I've realized in the last couple of years, like I really stopped talking as much, but then when I mm -hmm. get on these like little things, it's like this whole other, I get that soul burning desire. You're just channeling. <laughs> That's what you're doing. You're yes. channeling and then yeah, time just goes out of the window. I absolutely, yeah, yes. there's, there's no time. We're just here and really basking and receiving in the glory of the the transmission that you're letting through you because it really is a gift and I'm so grateful and so Thank many you. things that you were speaking to I resonate with in my own journey and yeah from the parents and the parents being like oh what are you doing for me that came in the form of I think it was December 2019 when I dove really deep into tarot because the way that my journey I've definitely it's kind of like I was trying on different outfits of like yeah. oh is this me and it was like is it is it tarot is it ayurveda is it vedic astrology is it numerology is it da 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 and i was kind of putting on these outfits just kind of being like oh waiting for that spark of recognition and mm -hmm. when it was tarot my mom was like just promise me you're not going to become like a lady in a tent reading tarot <laughs> cards like some kind of uh, circus lady and yes. even then when she said that there was that voice in me that I was like, I can't make this promise because part of me knew that this was the path that I was gonna, I, maybe not in a tent, but there was some part of me that would be doing readings and tarot and all of those things. And I, yeah. that was a moment of realization for me of seeing that part of her wasn't trusting me and didn't trust mm -hmm. my intuition. And of course, yeah. I, I literally, after 22 years, did a 180 flip and it was this kind of, immediate suddenly so for everyone in my life it was quite sudden but that was this gift for me to be like oh the only person to trust to listen to that inner voice the only person who needs to listen to that who gets to really listen to that and who that voice is even for is me my intuition is for me trusting mm -hmm. me is for me and yeah. As for my dad, it's your who, life. It is. It is. It's <laughs> yeah. my life. And oh, speaking of my life, I mean, for my dad, who 
He's so, like, he's wonderful. My mom is more spiritually open, so I've kind of been kind, uh, I guess the same way that your dad seeded books for you, I've, I seed things with my mom because I just know that yeah. that's part of our, our evolutionary relationship together. With my dad, it's it's me allowing myself to, to not share. <laughs> like, that I don't need to, I don't need to update everyone on everything that is happening in my life which is a brand new thing it's like I don't actually need to go out of myself for support the support and the resourcing is within me and also with my spirit with my council of light and all of those connections that I have within and Mm -hmm. for my dad it's like the 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 expectation of and really it's not even an expectation it's an offering of maybe an MBA or doing a grad degree. <laughs> and it's like that for from his perspective is a beautiful, wonderful next step. And if he were in my shoes, more power to him. For some people, mm-hmm. that is what resonates. And the truth is, that is not what resonates with me. Yeah. And my version, I've essentially in the past few years been constructing my own grad program, my own form of education. And it's so exciting that we get to do that because yeah. of... That, that's just what we get to do. And just one other mm-hmm. thing that's kind of dinging around about, you talked about external lies or things coming from outside. I guess mm-hmm. in my experience, anything, there is no outside, just as the inside mm-hmm. is one with the outside. And so yeah. the experience of something being a lie or an illusion or a program, mm-hmm. it's, it's inherently neutral. Like it's still yeah. inherently neutral yeah. energy and the, a big shift for me has been into remembering that nobody is programming me. No one, mm-hmm. from, there's no kind of like mysterious outside force that is coming in and, and controlling my life and anything that seems like it's coming from outside and influencing my life really is me choosing to encounter that. It's me choosing yeah. When I incarnated, when we incarnate, we choose mm-hmm. the experience that we're having. And yeah, even in every moment, true. it's it's not even that that's set in stone, too. Because that's yeah. the, the amazing thing about remembering the, the quantum field and the fact that past, present, future are all in the now. It's that each moment there's the free will choice, whether we are conscious or we remember that choice or not. We are the ones who are choosing what we experience. And so for me, in those 22 years of identifying in, mm, I would maybe say even 24, because there are even things, it's kind of like I started the spiritual journey and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm awake. And then there are just all these other things that keep waking up. It's just all these different parts keep becoming awake and awake from being dormant. And that's the, the fun of it. It just keeps, it keeps expanding. And for mm-hmm. me, these kind of first 24 years, I've gotten to experience separation consciousness. I've gotten to experience what it's like to be human in the ways that many choose to be human. And I'm so grateful for that experience. I'm so grateful that I got to, within my body, feel what it's like to feel friendship rejection and feel unlovable and unworthy and believe that there's something wrong with me. Believe that I'm never good enough. I'm so glad and grateful that I got to experience all of these programs, these beliefs, these energies, these frequencies as Mm -hmm. yeah, because I get to just include all of those into the, the, the light, the oneness that is, my yeah. true essence that I'm here for. And that even that, even the choice, like there's mm-hmm. nothing to do in order to become conscious. We are all already conscious. And it simply yeah. is a choice whether we remember we have a choice or not. At any moment, we can choose to remember who we are. And then that's, yeah. it's kind of like we send out that signal. And yes, it's like we, for example, prayer, sending out a signal we're not actually sending it outside of ourselves. It's sending, yeah. it seems like it's, we're speaking to someone else, but really yeah. it's, a, it's a feedback mechanism. It's the it way, bounces yeah. off and, it, and we're receiving, 
we are both mm-hmm. the receiver and the transmitter. And so yeah. we're receiving the voice of ourselves. And it's kind of like there's this phrase in this wonderful book that I've encountered recently called The Tablets of Light by Danielle Rama Hoffman. And there's this phrase that she uses called source light package. And this book is a channel channeled um, creation, co-creation with Toth. And source light package, it's kind of the, the analogy is that we're preparing for this backpacking trip, this backpacking trip of life. And it's like we can only carry a certain number of supplies at a for each leg of the journey. And so we leave these packages, these kind of refuel packages mm-hmm. along the way so that we can empty out what we've been carrying and fit, like refuel with things yeah. and pick up. Maybe, maybe we leave ourselves a little gift of a game that we enjoy playing, or maybe the package comes in the form of a person who sparks something. Mm-hmm. And each of these packages are activating that remembrance, activating and awakening these things that we are choosing to awaken at a specific point in time. So there's not, there's nothing to plan. There's nothing on a mind level for us to plan, which that's been a major shift from the first, you know, through college of how I lived, where it was planning, 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 because it was Mm -hmm. this trying to control, because if I don't plan, then I die, essentially. If I don't plan, then I perish and I dissolve and I die. You know, I hate planning. When you follow the thread, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's also this, it's kind of a both and too, right? There's the planning because mm-hmm. the, what's coming up right now is there is a beauty to the structure of yeah. a container. And so mm-hmm. we can have the structure and be the water that flows inside and be the walls mm-hmm. and we can be both at the same time and but ultimately surrender to the moment. It was planned before. It was planned before, yeah, but the before, before is now. But yeah. the before is now. So it's being planned now because the before yeah. is now and the future is now. <laughs> There's so many and so layers. But, yeah. But in the moment, we don't have to, to plan. We just have no. to make the choice, right? Yeah. So it's the And we don't even divide. have to make the choice. Yeah. We don't even have to make the choice because but many people free will decision. don't. decision. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And like knowing that that you can trust because it's planned, Mm -hmm. you know, that's what I, I really like about that is, is like knowing you can trust, sorry, I'm taking my earrings out, (laughs) (laughs) knowing you can trust because it's planned. And that gives you the, so many people are trying to plan. And so they're not present, you know? Mm -hmm. And so really just like, like, in the words of Ram Dass, like, be here now, like, be Mm -hmm. here now. It's all ready to go. It's all here for us. Everything you need is right here. And just remembering that and truly embodying yourself and coming back to yourself. Because that's something I've really struggled with is being everywhere but here, you know, whether that's, (laughs) um, you know, in my dreams going somewhere or in my meditations, mm-hmm. I go to this place. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's black everywhere and a ton of stars and I'm a star while I'm there. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And I go there and it's just, I'm that too. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we're stars next to well, each maybe other. Maybe we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're just shining we're right next to each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but like, that is, that is something like I was such an escapist. So mm. I had this little like epiphany kind of thing um, earlier. I was thinking about the inner child and, Mm -hmm. all these things and I was thinking about um the fifth house in astrology represents like children and creativity and I was like that's kind of like your inner child (laughs) you know and like uh I was thinking about it and like my fifth house is in Pisces and my moon and my Saturn are there and as a child I was an escapist I would read and read and read Mm. and I was living in all of these fantasy worlds and I was playing make-believe I was always thinking of what I could be what I could do and I was never present 
and I never learned to be present. And that is something my I'm so un, I've been so ungrounded my whole life. And just mm. thinking of what if, or trying to live vicariously through these fictional characters. And I had this like epiphany one day of, I can be my own character, you know, like I, <laughs> I'm that, like, I can be the greatest story I ever read, you yeah. know? And like, why am I reading about all these things mm-hmm. when I can, when I can embody that? And why don't I actually get in my body? Because my body was the <laughs> enemy whenever I was younger. Like I had mm. eating disorders and I like, I just, I was always bored and now I'm never bored. Like I haven't been bored in yep. like at least three years now. I'm mm-hmm. like, what is bored? Like, what do you mean by bored? <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't exist to yeah. me anymore. But it was this like, unlearning of like basically coming to the realization that it's it's safe like i can't Mm -hmm. remember who it is that said this but it's uh there's no problems in the present and if you Mm. think about it in the pre when you're in the present moment yeah when are there ever any problems and then i was like oh it's safe (laughs) that's a a major thing that's it that's the the feeling safe and at home in the body is especially for souls and energies and light beings like us who remember on some level conscious or unconscious journeys in the stars and this kind yeah. of this impulse to travel to always be seeking and searching and finding the place where we belong which again that's the belonging even as part of the the separation tribal consciousness stuff but that realization that it's here now it's being in the body i love what you said that we get to be the main characters we we are the main characters in our uniquely oh my gosh i'm remembering now when i was around i don't know little when i was maybe around five i remember having this kind of imagination or, or query within my mind which really i think was a uh some deeper knowing of that thought of what if all of our lives are just what if we're the characters in the storybooks and there are some giants out there that are reading my that's reading my life like a storybook to their child and I am just on the page of the storybook just like we read the characters on the pages of you know Harry Potter and like Harry Potter fully exists and that's the thing it's like there's there's the because for me 2021 was it's kind of like just in in my 2020 was like clearing I was doing all of this Mm -hmm. ancestral trauma and clearing but really it was kind of this this calibrating and redistribution of my consciousness so I was no longer enmeshed with and holding on to units of consciousness or energy or beliefs or programs that are not mine and are not uniquely from my essence and so that was kind of this redistribution back to my lineage back to the wherever that was from so there was a lot of what you might call um some might call healing or alignment or trauma work in 2020 Mm -hmm. and then 2021 it was at the it was like whoa I've been catapulted into the stars I in like one session I just had it was suddenly all of this these downloads about being a star seed and my star origins and da 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 Mm -hmm. and so last year I was very much living exactly like you described yeah as the star in the sky I was Mm -hmm. more comfortable and I was just called to experience that. Like even even in masturbation, it was a full body cosmic experience of like, there was one time I literally birthed a galaxy and I, I was brought down to inner earth and then, you know, all of these light beings were there and then I birthed a galaxy and I was like, oh my gosh, this is what's happening. And that is in that moment fully what is true and present for me in that now moment so that is as 
as cosmic as that sounds, that was me being embodied in that moment because it was me being fully present. And there was still a part of me throughout last year that... Because it was my aha moment of viscerally feeling like I, it was really, it was Earth Day last year. I remember that I was channeling Gaia and I was just feeling the depths of the grief and sadness present in just the entire environmental situation and just consciousness around the environment and mm-hmm. this, the, the layer of victimhood that Gaia is a victim or that the earth is a victim and needs saving and it was kind of this this grief of that Gaia is just all that everything in the earth star is her and she's fully conscious and da 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 Mm -hmm. and so that was this moment of fully embodying and not just knowing because there's a difference between us mentally knowing things and then experiencing it and so that was a a moment of me experiencing oneness with all of creation and Mm -hmm. so then for the rest of the year that's my that was my preference every I was just like I am you are me I am you the plant is me I am the sky like I'm lit I was just living in the frequency and the vibration wow, of, yeah, total <laughs> oneness, that there's no difference, that all is the same. Fundamentally, yeah. everything is neutral energy. And that is absolutely true. And I'm so grateful because that is that has become my foundation of experiencing mm-hmm. and embodying that. And yeah. what I realized in this new year, though, was that because we talked you talk about how each of the parts has a role to play within the whole last year, mm-hmm. essentially. I was like, I am the whole. I don't need to do anything because the whole already is within this quantum now moment. For example, even vision, I had so many visions of, you know, maybe me in an alternate timeline or a future timeline. And for example, even, you know, me being in a house on a cliffside beach, it's Mm -hmm. like, I would then shift my conscious awareness to already be there now. Because, you know, we can. We, I can already be there now. And it would relieve me of the need to, to mm, act anything. I didn't need to do yeah. anything because I was already there. And mm-hmm. there was essentially in that, because yes, it's true. There are all of the, those moments are already in existence. They all, all the moments that ever will be are already here now. And for example, one of the things this term came to me last year that I'm here to be a spiritual bajillionaire, like literally a spiritual bajillionaire. And that that for whatever reason is just happens to be part of my, the essence light being frequency that I am here to kind of anchor and embody. Mm-hmm. And you know, in this present moment, if I were just to take a little linear time earth star snapshot from a perspective of separation consciousness, I am not a spiritual bajillionaire. My bank accounts do not seem to reflect that. And so in order to relieve the the seeming separation between where I envision myself to be and where I truly in my heart know I already am and where my physical body is now. It's like there seems to be a disconnect or a dissonance. It's like, how can I know that I'm a spiritual bajillionaire and my bank account still be what it is? And the truth is, because both are simultaneously happening at once, but what I was doing last year was I was like, oh, well, the spiritual bajillionaires already exist. Like those people, they're already souls who are doing exactly what I'm envisioning. So I don't need to do it. It's like I've had visions of, you know, building retreat centers and community, blah, 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 all these things. And it's like, oh, people are, they've already got that covered. I don't need to do it because they've got it covered. And so that relieves me of any responsibility. And that was me dissolving my individuality into the whole. I was essentially being like, okay, paling doesn't have to do anything because everything already is. And the big shift in from the end of last year into this year was grounding, essentially. It was, and it was just this like natural organic thing of realizing that, oh, I've been choosing to be essentially dead. Like I've essentially been choosing to, 
to not be <laughs> as yeah. Pei Lang. I was rejecting the unique essence of me on some level, which in and of itself is a reflection and experience of separation. And mm -hmm. so what has been shifting and even the fact that I am here right now speaking and there's a like, it's a, it's a surreal moment in some ways that I'm like speaking as paling on a podcast that is like with paling because it's there. It's, it's me. <laughs> like it's me choosing to be me and the me choosing to be the only me that I am. Because even if there have been a bajillion podcasts, even if I have a podcast and you have a podcast and you have a podcast, they're each unique and individual yes. to us. And within the part so it's essentially I've been I've been in embodying and really being like okay where with all of these all of these visions or all of these intuitive hits or all of these downloads and insights what am I to do with them now be here now <laughs> it's just be here now there's nothing to plan it's just literally being here now and tr and trusting that it flows because when I look back on my life all it has ever done is flow. Even in moments where it seemed like there was an obstacle that was part of my experience mm -hmm. that I chose to experience. And so the amplification that I've been experiencing of me choosing to be paling, because the irony is that this brand that I've been, that I've developed and have, you know, is now blossomed. I started this when I quit my job in August. I started working on the branding in August and the fall and my website and all these things. And when I saw the branding and I saw the first mock-up of my website in December, it, it I, sp I spiraled within. <laughs> and I spiraled yeah. within all of this stuff of like being reflected. Do you know what it was like? It's like seeing my light being essence self and being like, I'm not that. I felt a, I was in this energy of feeling like an imposter of myself. It's like, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm not that rainbow light, bright self. I'm in this kind of dark cave, which, you know, mm -hmm. seasonally it feels very resonant with winter. Yeah. Yeah. But what I've been experiencing in spring is just the organic realization and it, an embodiment and grounding of, oh yeah, I am that. And that actually is my essence. And that is me. And there is no actual separation between what I thought was separate and me because it's all right here and now. And yeah, it just, it just feels so great to be me and to be the whole, because that yeah. is, that's, we are each unique. We are these pockets of individual with individuality with our signature essence our divine unique essence our mm -hmm. and even on an energetic level like our dna our dna our source code our origin source code is individual to us and yes. within the source code contains all it literally yes. contains all within our what we would call our flesh and blood contains the consciousness of all that is and mm -hmm we get to choose and play with and explore the infinite possibilities because focusing on me being me, it's actually clearing away any program and I'm choosing to turn off any program and include it into wholeness around passing the buck. It's like no one else is here to be me. No one else yeah. is here to be you. We are here to be the only us that we are yeah. And how You're wonderful the only is you that? that will ever exist in the entire yeah. universe. Like this one life that we're living now, like this one incarnation is like, I'm the only me that will ever mm -hmm. be here in the same exact way yeah. that I am now. How wild is that? Yeah. How exciting is that? Like, like, I think of the YOLO, like you only live once and I, I don't believe, I, I believe mm -hmm. that we live eternally, you know, mm -hmm. and we live many different like incarnations and all that's just my personal, um, take on it. And, uh, but like, I only live one Michaela. And so I'm going to yeah. give her the best damn shot she's got, you know? <laughs> oh, I and love I'm that. Gonna, yes. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that, like, she does everything she can. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes 
I, I struggle with the, the, like the winters, you know, um, I totally believe that, um, like we're on this, like, like cycle of nature and just with astrology and everything too, we have these like external influences that, but they make us, um, like reflect inward and expose different parts of ourselves. And like, they're just different energies to work through and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And like, get to know yourself better and all of that. But I, I go through these periods where I'm like, no, like I can't do this. Like how you were saying, like, Mm -hmm. no, I can't do this. Like, Oh, that's going to be embarrassing. If I, if I Mm -hmm. talk or, Oh, I stutter sometimes or, uh, like I have a hard time finding words. Well, I have a hard time finding words whenever I, when I don't care about, not that I don't care about something, but if I'm not passionate about it, when I'm living yeah. inauthentically, that kind of thing. But when I'm aligned with the moment, when I'm in that state of flow, when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and when I honor myself, then I mm-hmm. get in that flow state and everything just like amazing things happen. And it reminds me just of, I have this woman, um, B who I see, uh, who I see she's, um, an angel. What does she call herself? An angel messenger. And she is uh, fabulous. I love her so much. And she has been telling me for like a year and a half that I would be, starting a podcast and I was like mm. or no not a year half a year and I was like Lydia you're crazy like the first time I, ever said that with her, like, I was like not me and but then it started to and like I mm-hmm. started getting into astrology like that's like really the first thing I started getting into and I was being told by all these people that that's like what I'm supposed to be doing and I mm. felt it inside but I was like no like I can't do that. And like, no, like that's like, I can't Mm -hmm. outwardly like be a weird astrology girl. And I just was so concerned with so many outward things. Mm -hmm. And now I've just gotten into this place where I'm just like, I love this stuff and it makes me so happy. It makes time not exist. Like I can be in this like, work like I don't know what I was trying to say warp hole like whatever yeah just, like, yeah a creative yeah. vortex mm-hmm. yes and like I remember so when it, the day I decided um to create like my podcast like the website the logo like all of those things I did it all in like two hours and like yep. like what <laughs> like I yep. mean I need to go back and work on the the stuff, but yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I usually, we need to edit a little bit, but I usually <laughs> like it. I've had such a hard time with task initiation and, you know, I got mm. diagnosed with ADHD and it's like, no, I just hated doing what I was like told I had to do instead of doing what I love to do and what was right for me. And so I'm like, kind of like rewriting the story that, I thought my life had to be that I wrote for myself Mm -hmm. as a teenager um, who was told that she wasn't good enough, who was told Mm. that, but what's funny is this like overlord Michaela, like higher self was always there with the true story. Like, you know, and I, I wrote my little teenage story in erasable ink and we're erasing Mm -hmm. it now and revealing the the real story underneath. And it's just, it's like how you're talking earlier about like being the storybook. And I, I totally resonate with that because I really feel like we're breaking the fourth wall and (laughs) Mm -hmm. we're on some like cosmic television show and there are you know, the Arcturians <laughs> and the Palladians like yeah. like with their popcorn <laughs> or whatever uh, but they're uh, like light snacks <laughs> yeah. they're air snacks but like that's what I feel like yeah it's just like we're but we're like I don't know I don't know where I was going with any of that but I'm just so excited that there's just so much more it's simultaneously so much simpler and so much more complex 
than mm. I ever thought life could be. And it's so exciting yes. and it's so yeah. beautiful. And I read this book and it's um, by Dr. Brian Weiss and he's a past life regression, uh, past life regressionist, mm -hmm. um, but he's a psychiatrist um, for those people who don't know or aren't familiar with him. But he wrote um, Many Lives, Many Masters, which is his first book about um, regressing people to past lives. And that blew me out of the water and just completely changed how I viewed everything in one day. Mm. And it's like not even near the craziest thing I've read now. <laughs> but like, uh, he wrote this book called Only Love is Real. And it was a story of two of his patients who I'm not spoiling anything because he talks about it in the beginning, but they, um, he ends up figuring out that they were actually like, like soulmates in a past life mm. or they, they are soulmates and they have past lives that like coincide with one another. And he's like, ethically, like I can't intervene. And, mm. um, but he just talks about like in the regressions, uh, what happens in each of their life. Like the love aspect is such a, like the love aspect aspect or love story with those two is just one small portion of it. But it just talks about how, only love is real like that's the only thing that like truly exists is this like universal oneness and this like love like that's the only thing that really exists and like it's the he gives this uh he gives this example of he had a client he regressed and he lived this horrible life where he was greedy and terrible mm -hmm. and um just awful and so when he was like in the in between he said there were like there was fire and devils all around and um he was just like waiting for someone to notice him and dr rice was so confused because in like his like hundreds or thousands of regressions he had never experienced someone going to to a hell you know and he mm -hmm. was like what and um then the man said a spiritual figure that resembled Jesus like came to him and was like, don't you see that this is all an illusion? Only love is real. And mm. that just was so beautiful and like life changing to me to think about because it really is all our perspective and it really is all what we're willing to believe. And if mm -hmm. we go from our knowing and we honor what we always know to be true. We mm -hmm. live heart-centered, love-filled lives. And we are yeah. connected. And we remember everything. And we can choose not to. And that's our choice. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying earlier. and But it's life is pure magic when you really remember all you can do and all you're capable of. And... I, I started asking my mom, like, what was I like as a kid? Hmm. And um, I just was thinking about it because I was, like, feeling stuck and bored and, uh, like, a couple years ago. And I just was like, like, what was I like as a kid? Like, what did I enjoy? Because, like, I couldn't mm – -hmm. I didn't enjoy anything at that time. I was just like, this mm. all sucks. And, like, I – my mom was like, oh, you loved like drawing and you loved painting, like you're a little artist. And I rem like, then I started remembering like, oh, mm -hmm. all the art kits I had, all the drawings I did, like little art club that I was in and after school lessons with the art teacher and how much I loved it. And I stopped because I thought I wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. I was like eight. Like, yep. what? Yep. And Ditto. because someone, mm -hmm. yeah, because some like butthead little kid probably told me my like mm. coloring wasn't good or something like that you know and like i mean i'm sh i know i was a butthead little kid <laughs> you know but like i stopped doing what I, like all the things i love to do because i was told that i wasn't like good mm. enough or i told myself i wasn't good enough and at eight years old, like, of course yeah. you're not Picasso. Like, it took him 
how many years to get there? You know, like how much training did he have? Or, and just like any good artist, they practice. And I just like gave up on everything I loved as a kid because I thought that if I wasn't automatically amazing and like a little savant, then like it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. So everything I loved, I threw out and I just got so lost. And so like coming back to those like intuitive things that I was really into as a kid, like I will draw now. I, this is really funny, but like I drew a raven for the first time that's so beautiful (laughs) thank you and i had never tried charcoal before and like i freehanded that and i was like that's pretty good for my first time and so and you want to know the magic of that too the magic of you sharing that is that that is very well likely a synchronicity for someone specific who will encounter this video and be like oh my gosh the raven that is like the divine sign the the, da 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 because that you holding the raven is a source light package it's a seed for someone for someone that is the raven for you and i'm so i'm so glad that you're speaking of the inner child and that question because i that's something i've been reflecting on over the past weeks as well is yeah that if you'd asked me that question of what I was like as a child just a couple of years ago, I would have said always frowning, serious, like super just, mm, I yeah, very just kind of reserved and shy and all these things. When I asked myself that question just a couple of weeks ago, I suddenly remembered like my favorite things as a kid I loved fairies. I loved fairies. I loved dressing up as a princess. I loved spinning around. I loved when my parents would hold a blanket and toss me up in the air so I would get to remember what it's like to fly and be weightless. I loved being in nature and spinning around and... I just like you, I had all the art kits and I, I dreamed of, it was just around the age of eight. I dreamed of being a fashion designer and I dreamed of being a singer songwriter. And I squashed, I squashed those dreams within myself. It was like, I had this, this just, you know, from that, oh, I love that soul burning desire that you said, it comes from deep within. Mm -hmm. You're like, wouldn't it be amazing if I got to live this life or wouldn't it be amazing if this got to be me or I got to be this. And then all of those separation consciousness stories that I also chose to experience of being like, no, just like you, my voice isn't good enough. I'm not good enough to be a singer. I'm not creative enough. That was, oh my God, that was such a thing for me. I'm not creative enough. And there was also, it's not legitimate because I was very, um, on the, uh, achievement I was just fully bought into the the achievement and success stories of what a successful Mm -hmm. life looks like which is yeah work hard work hard in school to get a good job and go to good college and work hard and then retire and then be happy like Mm -hmm. that was kind of my my life plan yeah (laughs) and realizing that I'm now living my dreams Like in this present moment, I am literally living all of my eight-year-old, four-year-old, six-year-old, all of the selves of me. I am the only person who has ever stopped me from living my dreams is me. The only person who has ever dimmed my light, capped me. The only person who has ever limited me in any which way is me. I've been the one limiting myself and choosing to hide, choosing to dim and... Part of that, like for you talk about other people and the things that people comment and butthead kids, what I chose to experience through school, which was school really is, it's like this, this, uh, social boot camp of human life. That's kind of what school school is like. It's bizarre. It is. And for me, school, I... Oh, I remember what I was going to say because you were talking about the things. Oh, yes. Ascended mastery. So our areas of ascended mastery. So for me in school, I just. You know how they say, oh, do your best or do your best, like do your best, try your best. 
I always knew that when I did my best, my best was 100%, you know, Mm -hmm. it was just A's. And so it was kind of like, okay, if I, anything less than what I knew was my best, because essentially there was part of me that was connected to my inner knowing that my best is infinite. (laughs) My best is perfection, but I was separate from the knowing that even if I get 86% on a test, that that is perfection. That is my best in that moment. Mm -hmm. And... But yeah, so I was just very serious and just channeling all of my creative energy into what I thought I should be. It was the only focal point that I had in that time. And it was a focal point that was coming from outside of me rather than from my heart, rather than from within my heart. And just like you were saying how stuttering when you're speaking about things you're not passionate about, I could, I had the discipline and the skill set to succeed at whatever I put my mind to. Yeah. And I was chronically constipated, which I shared in the last podcast episode too, because it was not coming from my heart. It was not yeah. my true authentic essence or expression I had or creative flow. problem in high school. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, my mom, yeah. Lots of people. Yeah. It's, the, it's the opposite problem. But for me, yeah. it was like the suppression of my creativity or the boxing mm-hmm. in of it into these specific areas that I thought I should. And Mm -hmm. The cool thing about Ascent, like our areas, because as our unique light being divine selves in our individuality, we each have these areas of true mastery, these things, these skills, these gifts, just like you were talking about your clear audience and your, your hypersensitivity to sound, we incarnate with eons of experience already. And so even though Picasso, maybe, you know, the whole 10,000, the, the 10,000 hour rule does not apply when your consciousness is within the quantum field, because the truth is I don't need 10,000 hours to be a master. It takes, it can just be moments. It can be instantaneous to remember and activate. It really is this momentary instantaneous choice to activate whatever it is, that skill, that gift, Mm -hmm. that whether it's your, you know, experience of being psychic or telepathy, or even like a literal skill, like playing piano, quantum evolution, this rapid accelerated evolution. And oftentimes those things that we come in incarnated with are areas of mastery. They can be so close to us and come so naturally and come so easily and come in such flow that Mm -hmm. we, at least me, it's like dismissing that as being a skill. It's like Mm -hmm. these things that came so easily, but then this belief that I needed life to be hard. Like I was Mm -hmm. choosing for life to be hard and to be a struggle. Like I should do the thing that comes hard to me so that I can improve. Like that was what I was choosing, which, you know, more power to you if that's what you're choosing. That's beautiful. I've chosen that too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And the truth is I just choose ease. Like I am in a state where I just choose life gets to be easy. Life gets to be in flow. And that's just what I choose. I choose a life of ease and overflowing energetic and abundance and Mm -hmm. just aligning with the things that I truly, that delight my heart that are joyful for me. Like singing. I love, I love speaking. This is so fun and it is easy. And that's a gift. Like communicating and transmitting through my voice, through my quantum voice, That just comes easily to me, even if Mm -hmm. there are these stories that I once had that it wasn't good enough. When when that story, when I just turn off that story or choose not to believe it, yeah, there's nothing left. There's nothing wrong. (laughs) There's absolutely nothing wrong, and everything just flows. And just like you were describing about being in the creative vortex, yes, I don't know what day it is, but yesterday, I think it was yesterday that I launched this podcast. So it was. I think it was April 4th and I just did everything in, in hours. It was just spontaneous creation and it just Mm -hmm. bloop. And then, then there it is. And from scratch is just bloop. And I was just, it happens quickly because I am in flow and it is aligned for me to be creating that. And I'm creating from the essence and truth of my light self. I'm not forced. I've learned about myself to calendar things, there's a balance, putting things on the calendar and then showing up and creating. And yeah, that. mm. 
That's then, all. That's all. So <laughs> you're a manifester. So like 10 degrees Taurus, that is like manifester, manifester. Like you are the manifester. And I would be so interested. So what did you say your rising sign was again? Virgo and then moon Aquarius. Okay. So if you're a Virgo, you have Taurus in your ninth house. So you're a spiritual manifester. Like that is literally like what you... What's the ninth house? Uh, the ninth house is the house of higher education and like spiritual... Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. That very much aligns with every astrology reading I've ever had. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, and it's also like naturally ruled by Jupiter. So it's like a very like expansive mm-hmm. and stuff. But Taurus is just this like... Um, beautiful creating energy like it's it's security it's the foundation it's the like the blanket of grass like on the earth like it Mm. or it is the earth from which we build things from you know so it's just like an earth has endless potential and what can be created out of it what it can grow what it can nurture and it really is like what you put into the soil that like determines what grows out of it Mm -hmm. and so i um I love Taurus. Uh, I've had bad experiences with Taurus men, but <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because my partner last year was a Scorpio, but it was yeah. a, it was a beautiful experience, beautiful, oh, wonderful, good. magnificent. But yeah. it's just funny that we're Scorpio oh, yeah. Taurus mom, right now. It's so funny. My mom was uh, engaged to a man. She's a Taurus Sun Sagittarius Moon, and. Um, I dated a guy that was a Taurus Sun Sagittarius Moon. Well, my mom was engaged to a man who was a Scorpio Sun Pisces Moon, just like me. And it's so funny how, like, I like relived her experience in an opposite kind of in a flipped. Mm. It's the same but different, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it's just so interesting. Like, my mom essentially got to experience a relationship with a man that was similar to me, and I experienced. <laughs> Like, but it's just so uh, interesting because you gain this perspective. Like, yeah. they're very different. And this is not an Alabama thing. But yeah. <laughs> it's, like, very interesting how you, like, I started realizing just when you have relationships with certain people, with certain energies, there are similar mm-hmm. themes that come up. And it's, like, well, I dated someone who had similar placements to my mother to so that I I understood that energy better, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like the energy she gives off, the energy they give off. Like uh, like dating someone or having a friendship with someone who's like yeah. my little sister. Like I'm understanding that energy better or just there's all these different ways we can experience yeah. it. And so we like identify the patterns mm-hmm. and like, what is it teaching us? What are we learning from it? And we all, what's awesome is uh, each of us have all of the energy within us. Like that's mm-hmm. the whole thing about a natal chart. Yeah. It's, it's circle. And mm-hmm. like people are like, oh, I don't have any like Aquarius in my, mm. so like I don't have any planets in Aquarius. So if I were to say, oh, I don't have any Aquarius in my chart, like that would be a lie. I do have Aquarius in my chart. It's in yeah. my fourth house. And uh, mm. like, it's just not expressed through like my values, my passions, like it, but mm-hmm. it's in there. And yeah. sometimes it's, it takes certain things. Like my family would bring that out in me. Like this experience brings that out in me because it's the, it's the viral communication. It's something unexpected. It's something like, and that happens in my like fourth house which is like the house of home and family here I am in my house having this like uh this unexpected um just different experience it's uh on I'm trying to think of the word it's um technology why couldn't I remember technology (laughs) it's it's through technology which is represented by Aquarius and like that's in my chart and mm. so just realizing that we have every expression yeah. within us and we and so that's also we can be whoever we want to be 
Mm-hmm. And we're a we're capable of being whoever mm-hmm. we wanted to be. Like if I wanted to be just like Jim Carrey, mm-hmm. I could be mm-hmm. just like Jim Carrey. I could learn, yeah, or I could channel his energy, and I could embody mm-hmm. that like charisma, you know. Yes, but I choose to express the chart, or not the chart that I was born with, but I choose to be the energy of the universe from the time and place I was born, like born and Mm -hmm. that my chart is the visual expression, uh, the map of, you know, like I choose to be that instead. Yes. I'm so, well, two things. I want to say this and then I want to talk about the partners because that I, we are capable of anything. And oh my gosh, the number of times I heard that growing up of just, or even just felt that within myself, I've always known that, you know, the world is my oyster. Like anything Mm -hmm. is possible. If I just focus my energy and my, you know, creative manifesting power towards anything, you know, I could be a doctor, I could be a lawyer, I could be a da 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 -da. And I didn't become a doctor, I didn't study law because I knew those weren't what I enjoyed. (laughs) Like those weren't for me. And so it's that simultaneous recognition, just like me embodying being the wholeness last year and, you know, just continuously, but it's like, yes, in, in the moment we have infinite energy within us and there are infinite possibilities before and within us that we have Mm -hmm. access to. We have infinite access points and there can be this interference energy of, that being overwhelming, the, what is that saying? Being spoiled for choice. It's like, if I can do anything, how do I focus? It's like, how do I know what's actually for me? And that I feel, yeah, that I feel like I've been waiting. (laughs) Yes. I've been like waiting (laughs) to even just in the, um, up the prior months waiting, Mm -hmm. like, what is the thing that is specifically for me, even within, you know, you, I, I started the whole spiritual or, you know, the spiritual remembrance started me. Mm-hmm. And I thought that that would be like the clarity. Like it's, it's like, I've been waiting oh, yeah. for the clarity of my yeah. focus. Like what, what is it that I am here for? What is, what am, what am I here to build or create or do? And the truth is the clarity has been there all along. And the clarity mm-hmm. really is just in the present moment. But I was choosing up until, you know, the past days up until April, I've been choosing to experience confusion. I've been choosing to, even within the remembrance, experience confusion of, Mm -hmm. oh, maybe, maybe it's this, or maybe it's that, or maybe, maybe I'm da da da, or maybe I'm this. And so I so relate with something you said earlier about allowing yourself the freedom to change your title or what you call yourself and and that messenger for of love for you really speaks to your essence and that's kind of for me this recognition that we're multi-dimensional mm-hmm. so yes we're multi-dimensional and we're also specific like there's yeah. spe- the fact that i am in this place on this planet at this time in this body wearing this clothing like Mm -hmm. there's a specificity to my expression and that is the clarity the clarity is the fact that there's a keyboard right there there's a guitar right here there's there's things in my current moment there's a plant friend here there are things that are reflecting to me what I enjoy and what I love and and my focus is already here I mean, even the fact that we're speaking on a podcast right now, that is, if that is not clarity of what I am doing, that is, that is it. And the other thing about, yeah, so me turning, choosing to turn off the confusion and choosing to clear the, because there was this program that if I focus, if I narrow, then I'm separating from source. That's essentially Mm -hmm. what the program was. Like, if I choose one thing, then I'm rejecting everything else. If I choose one thing, if I choose to be one part, then I'm no longer all of the parts. And that's not true. The truth is, we are one part. We can choose one thing and still be connected infinitely with a whole. We don't, I don't have to eat every single ice cream flavor there is to, well, I, I just don't. I just don't have to eat every single. I just, I, just, I just don't have to eat every single. I don't even yes, have to eat ice cream. Don't, I don't even have to other, eat ice cream. Because there are yeah. other people 
doing yes. those things and we're and the ice cream is there for, for them. them yeah yeah so, oh my gosh i love the, okay the ice cream flavor like Rocky Road, for example, Rocky Road exists because for, for many people, for even if it's just for one person, this thing exists because it exists for them. Uh-huh. The, that flavor of life, that flavor and frequency of energy, it would only exist, it only exists because it's for someone. Like we only have the skills that we choose to have, the gifts and the experiences because they are for us, because they even, when we consider our connectedness to the whole, because they offer a specific contribution and there is someone on the receiving end, whether that is us or someone yes. that we're sparking, which brings me to the divine partnership. And the divine partnership, which is a beautiful way that in this human earth star life, we mm-hmm. choose to and get to experience evolution. Because in my experience, oh my gosh, yeah, reflecting on my past three partners, which for me, you know, I had my first kiss at 22. It was a month before I graduated college. And so I was in all the ways choosing to be turned off (laughs) in like just closed and protected and guarded and safe in the way that I felt safe. And then 22 hit and I I was like, 2019, I was like, this is my year. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're just gonna, we're, we're, we're blossoming and we're just gonna do it. And then I, you know, 2019 had a partner experience and then 2020 and then 2021. And when I reflect on each of those, there are clues about who I am in those because yeah. who I am attracted to, who I'm magnet- magnetically Because each of us, like the essence of us, our energy, we're magnets. We are continuously attracting towards us and we're sending out signals. And so that is all happening simultaneously. And when I consider, okay, who were the partners that I attracted and what were those patterns? Because I was choosing to be with them because I activated certain things within me and I activated Mm -hmm. certain things within them. And we were these evolution partners in our journeys. The first one... YouTuber. Second one, a, uh, an actor, performer, writer, person. Third one, rapper who's also a massage therapist and somatic guide. Like literally, yeah. there were in, and I highlight those aspects of them. You know, they're multidimensional beings, and they're far more than what they their career was. But the the yeah. relevance for me is that those were they were visible. <laughs> They were in their lives choosing to be visible and creatively expressing through their voice and through being seen, which for me, that was always like the, it was scary to be seen. It was scary to Mm -hmm. shine. It was scary to be seen because through school, it was always an isolating experience. Like me shining and, you know, being high school valedictorian, it felt like there was a target on my back and nope, you know, this is, this is all the story in my head and what I was experiencing But that program was no one wants to be my friend or nobody is my friend or I'm intimidating or whatever it is. There was just this this fear of shining because it would mean disconnecting with source. It would mean disconnecting with humans. And it would mean Mm -hmm. I would be isolated. That it's lonely to be a star, essentially. That it's lonely to shine as a star. And, and now we know from our meditations, it is not lonely. That it's not. Like, exactly. <laughs> it's not. There are all the other it's stars. Not. And that's the beautiful thing. You get to shine as the star that you are. Each of my partners, they get to shine as the stars that they are. Yes. And there is infinite space for me to yes. shine as well. We yes. get to shine together. And them, yes. like essentially them being the mirrors for me. That was a huge realization because I parted ways with my last partner just before Christmas. And I was like, I realized after that separation that I essentially like this is my time to embody those things that I always admired in them. There were qualities that I always kind of was in awe of and when I experienced them, like the ability to just freely express their voice and go into accents or just perform or all these things really being seen, being heard and expressing themselves freely. And then it's like, oh no, it's not that, you know, it it wasn't actually yin and yang where I bring half and they bring half and then we complement each other. It's that those qualities, just like you're saying in the natal chart is a full circle. 
I am that too. Like I, yes. that, those skills and that ability to be confident speaking to a crowd or singing on stage, like that's in me. Yes. That's in yes. me. Yes. yes. That's what, so my current partner, um, who is my, like, he's, he is me, you know? And yeah. that's what, that's the whole thing is like, I have a Scorpio um, Venus and a Leo Mars. He has a Leo Venus and a Scorpio Mars. Mm. Our, uh, like, our masculine and feminine energy are just swapped. But they're the same. Mm -hmm. And we have different expressions of it, but they're the same. We're both Pisces moons. They're just at a different degree. His mid or my midheaven is like conjunct his sun and his Mm -hmm. Venus. And it's just like we have uh, his like Saturn is conjunct my Venus. Like he has like Saturn and Mars and Scorpio. Like we just have all all the things like makes sense i remember when i first met him we were friends and i've been on the astrology thing for a while and i was looking at his chart and i was like this is my person (laughs) like i like like, i knew instantly when i met him just that he i remember the first time we hugged i could not i could not be his friend anymore like i Mm. there was this knowing like yeah. this visceral reaction that I've never had in my entire mm-hmm. life. Just yeah. this, it literally was like the lightning bolt that animated me mm-hmm. in this like romantic way because it was, it was like meeting my myself like I had never known myself before. And mm, yeah. that's, that's what this like divine union is. It's this mirroring of yourself like I can do all the things he can do and he can do all the things that I can do, but that's, that's not who we are. We have different expressions of the same energy, but we we see ourselves in each other, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, he is my home or more like I'm his home and he's the, We were talking about it and how I called you a master builder. Like he's the master builder for, for us. And like, I'm the visionary and the beautifier and he's the master builder. And, but like, we are one whole unit and we both are like different parts on the same body. Mm -hmm. And we are that on a like, Granted, like it goes up and up and out and out and stuff, but that's just like for us and our our partnership, that's what it is, is like we're doing different things, but we're working towards the same thing and there's this unity and there are frustrations, just like you have frustrations between like mind, body, spirit with like Mm, your What a great way to put it. Yeah, because that's just an inherent, but that's even a like a seed has to be perturbed in order to bloom, to grow, sprout, whatever, like anywhere it's a universal, natural truth, a law of nature that friction growth uh, or friction perturbance, like whatever, just any kind of (laughs) catalyst. That's a catalyst. it has to happen for there to be growth. So, you know, we may have this like little like frustrating thing that happens, but that's so great because we get to explore each other Mm -hmm. more. Now I know like more about why he operates in a certain way. He knows Mm -hmm. more about why I operate in a certain way. And then we know more about how we operate together in that way. And we can try it a different way next time, or we can, if we really like it, we can keep it the same or whatever. So it's this like beautiful lesson. And that's what, this is the first person I've ever been with where I truly saw myself reflected Mm. back, you know, and that's what I feel like our divine partner is, is that, is that mirror of self. And it's not, they're not completing you. You're complete. Mm -mm. They're just reflecting back to you. 
what's always been there. <sighs> yeah, I, I mean, I so feel it, especially because that was my 2021. My 2021, I... Yeah. Well, just about the friction thing. The beauty is that we get to choose how we experience that friction, that catalyst. And mm-hmm. I've experienced, I've gotten to experience friction and catalysts in relationships in many different ways. And what my partnership last year really offered me this opportunity was to embrace even the things that seem to be dis- dissonant in just pure love. And that like meeting each other eye to eye, one to one, equal to equal, and fully divine to divine like it's a complete equality in that relationship and what you were describing about hugging for the first time and just knowing like for one person it was I met in coffee shop and literally it was like there was just a knowing and then Mm -hmm. last year with my partner the first time that we touched like held hands which was on our first like in-person date it was literally unlike anything I've ever experienced the intensity of the energetic sensation and that's even it because over the past years I've been expanding my capacity you know in general but really expanding my tolerance for experiencing sensation it's quite Mm -hmm. a thing to be in the physical body and to feel energy to feel sensation and it can often be you know I've gotten to play out the program of numbing and avoiding feeling sensation in my body much like literally dissociate just kind of like we were talking about escapism dissociating disconnecting from my body to not feel the intensity of sensation because the frequencies that were there to be experienced at that time felt i was experiencing them from discomfort that they were really uncomfortable and even overwhelming And so I remember the first time that we held hands, this was the beginning of last year, and I was just continuously connecting with my spirit guides because a lot of my stuff and the frequencies and overlays that I've been clearing are specifically around intimacy and intimacy with men and just clearing a lot of stuff around that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I was just communicating with my guides and being like, am I safe? Am I safe? Mm -hmm. Is it aligned? Like, am I safe with this man? Is, is it safe for me to be like physically connected with him? And I was hearing yes, but I very much like, I literally, my in fight, flight, freeze, I went into freeze and just my energy yeah. sucked in. And I was just like frozen. And then, because it was beautiful how he described it afterwards, because he's definitely like an energetic master as well he described how then my hand started moving. Like at first my hand was essentially just limp in his because I went into freeze mode and the intensity and the overwhelm and am I safe? And then it was like my hand started moving and it was like I rem- I came to life again. It's like I remembered mm. that I was, I was in my hand and that I could choose to be in my hand and I, I was safe and I could choose to feel safe. And there's so much in that of with the divine union and that divine recognition that this is a partner who is the one for us in that moment. It's Mm -hmm. powerful. It's potent. And it does, it it can like, yeah, we, that evolutionary journey is really powerful. And I very much up and, you know, not well, not you know you you don't know maybe you don't know i very much up until the point of separation i had was having visions of him and i being together you know i very i have i've had visions of him and i having babies together of being married and how i experience those visions now is that it's not that they're invalid or that they weren't about to come true because the truth is I was experiencing them now, like as in, in that now moment. So a vision of me when I was partnered with him, a vision of us being married, it's because in some timeline, in some point of the quantum now moment, we were getting married. Like that was happening. We were birthing twin babies together in this gorgeous home. Like there, like there were all of these moments that actually were happening 
And just because my present physical self does not seem to be on that timeline anymore because the timelines, you know, we choose to shift them and they shift. That doesn't mean that they weren't true because they were absolutely yeah. true and I was experiencing them in the moment. And getting to be kind of on, you know, the other side of this divine union partnership journey, what you were saying about like how you were saying I'm the, you were the visionary and he's the builder and you're the visionary and the beautifier essentially post partnership and just being my like single one of one self, I am the visionary. Mm -hmm. I'm the beautifier and the builder. I get to be yeah. I am all of those things. I am all of them in one. I am the giver and the receiver, the receiver and the giver. And it's wonderful. And I can choose yes. to enjoy being the one of one. And do I feel that divine? Yeah. I already know that the divine partner who I'm going to be partnered with for decades to come, he's there. I'm, I'm gesturing out here because the point in, in terms of where the me who connects with the him that he is, is not yet the me that I am now, even though yeah. that me is here. So I am connected with him. And, you know, right now I can tune into him if I, if I desire, but mm -hmm. it's like, I get to just enjoy the unfolding of it. I just get to like, enjoy being 24 almost 25 and being single and oh, spending my enjoy it. you know <laughs> yeah. it's the best time I just get to enjoy it. yeah but yeah. every time is the best time the yes. now time is the best time yes and I just agree. as I'm just as I I'm loved... speaking just because I oh what well, go ahead oh I was just gonna say I loved being 24 I learned so how old are you now like I'm 27 so I'm are you a about to approach you. your Saturn return uh, yeah, so May of next year is Saturn return. Do you so feel I'm the interested... preparation for it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my life in the last like couple of months, it's been pretty crazy. Um, I was dating someone at the end of last year. So I mm -hmm. met my, my boyfriend turn. now um, a, a year ago, uh, over a, a little over a year ago. And we both were like had just ended pretty like tough relationships and we met and we're like oh like we just need to be friends right now because if we mm -hmm. date we're gonna screw it up because we're not ready to date and yeah um, so we just stayed really good friends we'd go paddle boarding on the weekends together we'd go hiking um just talked on the phone a lot and really got to know each other on this deep deep mm -hmm. level and we had lived similar experiences um uh just romantically uh so his romantic relationships in mind we had similar behavior patterns that we struggled mm. with and similar themes kept popping up and we both communicate in a similar way um or it's like we have the same emotional foundation but just different ways of expressing it and so mm. we can communicate with like we speak each other's language essentially and um like he can interpret me and i can interpret him we understand exactly what the other person means or most people would um get it skewed or like he is very um analytical and he likes to fix things while well, most people see that as a bad thing or as him mm -hmm. being a know-it-all or something like that um but it's like it's because it's out of love like he wants to make and make things better and improve things and he, he does it in such yeah. a loving way but it's like misinterpreted and so we just what like, a really testament know. too of you what a testament of you being the messenger of love that you are because that is <laughs> That's reflective of the lens with which you, through which you experience him and the, you experience life. It's like you yeah. see through the stuff yeah. to the love that is his essence. Yes. And that's like, we're all so misunderstood. Like that's what all like conflict is, is a lack of understanding at some point it's broken down somewhere. And so people feel misunderstood. So they get angry and all like or sad or upset or whatever like that's always what it comes down to and we just had this like intense friendship but we were just friends 
and we kept it at just friends. Like we'd flirt with each other sometimes and that kind of thing. And then, um, I moved away. So I was living at Smith mountain Lake in Virginia and traveling for work. And then I got my, um, corporate job over here and I moved to Richmond, Virginia. And, um, uh, so I'm like two and a half hours away from him now. And I got back together with said ex from before and, um, he started kind of dating and uh, I just like fell back into all the patterns. I had worked so hard to mm. um, to untangle and rewrite. And I just like realized that I was so comfortable and willing to like be the martyr or just like do what's mm. comfortable for everyone else's sake or like, mute myself to make other people comfortable and I could mm-hmm. live this like this like subpar life mm-hmm. as uh, Michaela the girl who works a corporate job and has the the boyfriend potentially husband one day that works at the same company and like and not to say anything bad about people who yeah. live that life but that's not the life for me and if it's mm-hmm. the life for you like you can do that so much better than I can, you know, yes, and yeah. you'll be, you'll thrive in those yeah. jobs. You'll uplift people and your yeah. expression is needed there, but my expression is needed here. And like, I just had this, so my, my Nana actually died in, um, in March and mm. like, she was like my sunshine growing up and like, she just was the, like the biggest encouragement of my entire life. Like she was always like, you can do anything. And like, she would like always sing, you are my sunshine to us. She was just like the biggest, brightest light in my life. Oh, and brightest light in my life. one moment, my, um, my AirPods. Oh yeah. Which, uh, <laughs> get different. Do, 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 do. Let's see if this will work. Let's see if this will work. Do to do to do to do. I have an idea. I have an idea. Okay. I have... Oh! <laughs> this is... Feels very fitting. <laughs> I was gonna say that. <laughs> I am very grateful for this experience. Let's see. Hello? I think it, can you hear me? Oh wait, you can, you can hear me, but I can, and I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Yay, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm so grateful for the abundance of options of listening yes. devices. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, oh, that's, that's too many. Okay, just one. Okay. okay. We're, we're recentered. Your grandma's son, your Nana's sunshine. Oh, yes. So my Nana was just like the biggest sunshine and encourager in my life. And like, I felt like the last couple of years have kind of like prepared me for her loss because I think before mm. going on this journey, I, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. And I wouldn't have been able to see that, that she, like, I literally hold all of her DNA inside of me. I have that mm-hmm. sunshine inside of me and I take her wherever I go. And whenever I do things that remind me of her, like she lives through me and I mm-hmm. can be empowered knowing that I have that light within me. And it was so cool because talking about the Saturn return coming up. So my sister's Saturn return was um, exact on March or no, February 10th, I think that's, no, February, 
13th. That's when my niece was born. Um, I've got to make sure I know that for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bad aunt. Um, just kidding. But uh, so the day my niece was born, my sister had her Saturn return. Well, my Nana said she was waiting to go until my niece was here. Mm. And we went and visited and my, my Nana got to hold her second great grandchild yeah. and she died a week later. Um, so she died March 10th and it was just this beautiful cyclical, like, like here is this birth and here is this death mm. and like, like, but they're all here and they were all mm-hmm. always here. And yeah. it just really made me think. And I, it was so funny because me and my Nana have always just been so close. Um, even if we didn't talk very much sometimes, it was just like when we were together, it was just this. And even now I can feel it, you know, it's just yeah. this like, like I've known her for lifetimes and I know that. And we are just so bonded. And I told her when she was laying in her bed in her house and we were saying goodbye and I told her, I was like teasing her and I was like, well, I asked her what uh, she was going to send me to let me know she got to heaven. She's like, mm-hmm. uh, this like huge Southern Baptist uh, Christian woman. She loved Jesus so much and uh, she just couldn't wait to go home, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I asked her, I said, Nana, what are you going to, what are you going to send me when you get to heaven? And she goes, she's on a ton of morphine. (laughs) And she she goes, oh, oh, I know. I know what I'm going to send you. And I was like, okay, what? And she was like, tons and tons of sunflowers. And I kid you not, I've seen sunflowers everywhere, Mm. like everywhere. But I also told her, I said, Nana, I'm going to need you to send me a husband and a baby. (laughs) (laughs) and it was so cool because literally two days after we had that conversation she was crossing in and out in that time period Mm -hmm. you know and i think she was just like one one foot uh in the spirit one foot on earth just popping in and out and um i was getting like signs before um she was gonna pass uh and so I knew it was going to be, I thought it was going to be on 311 because I kept seeing 311 everywhere. And so I thought it was going to be Friday 311. And what's crazy is I recorded uh, a podcast, um, which I told a story about her on that podcast. And that was on 310, the day she died. And that night she died. Mm. And it was like, this was planned months and months in advance. And then I got to like talk all about her that day and then she passed. And so it was just this like beautiful, beautiful thing that was happening. But there was a point to all of this. (laughs) Oh, the Saturn return. So like my whole life, like in that time period is like shooting off. And I feel like it's like my, now that my Nana is like not bound by her Mm. body, she's like in the spirit and she's like doing her thing and she's really like getting out there and, and making things happen for me. I feel like, you know, like my, my best friend who I was so in love with, like finally realized like oh I love you too and I love this too and he reached out to me then he went to Mexico and sent me a picture of a sunset and it looked like a grandmother like reaching out for a baby (laughs) in the clouds and it was just like what and then like we've been seeing like sunflowers everywhere and just like the podcast things taking off like here I am now like uh just uh my like astrology stuff is starting it like I've had so many people reach out to me asking about oh when are you gonna do astrology readings like blah 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 and mm-hmm. I'm just like okay I get it like that's what I'm supposed to be doing right now and it's like all like taking off which children and creativity are like in my fifth house where my Saturn is so it like all makes so much sense yeah and so like I 
I'm so, so, so many people are scared about their Saturn return because they're like, oh mm. no, Saturn return. It's something like horrible and scary. Saturn is just discipline or devotion, as I like to call it. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's where we are to be devoted in our lives, where mm. we have been a little too lackadaisical, maybe in past lives. Oh. Or... Where'd you, you, where, what happened? <gasps> It literally just, all of a sudden, my page went blank. What is going on? We're just, well, okay. Whatever I was just saying, I feel like this is a wonderful moment. That This is something that I am inspired to ask you. Being the beautiful medium and connector of spirits that you are, and the ways that you connect to spirits, yeah. because I think that's a, a wonderful thing of our individual gifts, is, like, for me, I know that, yes, I can connect with, spirits and the spirit realm and loved ones who have passed that's just general that's like not my primary channel or frequency that i resonate at and Mm -hmm. that's great because different people you know some people are mediums and some people are this and da 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 so clearly we are joined by beautiful beautiful beings of light we are clearly joined by my guides and light being supporters and yours and clearly your grandma and we're joined by may may who's the wonderful puppy who's barking outside <laughs> we're joined by this this sunlight that is just beaming down on me and really encouraging me to embrace just shining and radiating as pure light <laughs> there are all these elements going on and so michaela <laughs> We are here, and what, what, as you kind of tune in to this moment, what is present in your sensing? Yeah. So, I am sensing a teacher. <laughs> um, I see this as just a real life example of hiccups happen and disruptions happen, and they don't have to be so serious. Mm. Like they don't have to be so heavy. You don't have to get upset. Mm -hmm. You don't have to react to them. They just are in their own (laughs) way. And we have to, we have to be okay. And we have to be here now. (laughs) And, and just getting in touch with that playfulness Mm. in ourselves so that we are comfortable when things go south and we are in flow and we're flexible and it doesn't bother us because you know maybe this delays us and so if i go out later and drive to the store Mm -hmm. to get something i need i don't get in a car accident i would have if we had Mm -hmm. got delayed and i left at a different time so it's like there's Everything is timed exactly how it's supposed to be timed Mm -hmm. and people need, I just see that as something we all need to remember, especially when we're driving, especially Mm. when there's like these moments we really want to react and act um, uncharacteristically ourselves, but also like ask ourselves why, like why, why do I get so mad Mm. when like this little disruption happens. Yeah. Like, what is it telling me? Why am I? Why am I so impatient? Why is someone else's or why is a blip of the internet such a dramatic inconvenience? You know that kind of thing. If if it doesn't make us lose, and even if it does, maybe a better conversation would have mm-hmm. happened. You know. Yeah. So it's just like. Well, I'm so glad. Maybe we needed to have that. Absolutely. And I mean, the fact that you brought up the driving thing, that's something my mom would always say growing up or just something I always grew up kind of believing of, okay, well, if I miss, if I miss an or make a wrong turn or a turn that seems wrong in the moment, then maybe I would have been hit by a car if I continued down that same path, just like we were talking about just before of the divine detours. And in my experience of because I love that that the inquiry of, okay, what is this energy that is surfa- surfacing if it has been sparked, catalyzed by some experience mm-hmm. of friction? Because you're right, we could, I could, you could experience the, you know, video cutting off, the earphones losing battery as being the end of the world. 
And that could be, it could literally be, oh my gosh, like the world is crumbling. And I, I choose to just, you know, it's all good. And I love you bringing up play because it is, it just light, it, 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 it's funny yeah. because it does there, it has a way of, it's like lightning, oh, yeah, cares. lightning. And it's just like, <laughs> it's all good. I'm just like shining here. It's. The lighting is the way the lighting is. The dog is barking the way the dog is barking. And it just all gets to be part of. And that's what I love about multidimensionality. It is hilarious. It gets, we get to laugh at it because it just, it just is. Yes. And yeah, if though, so if about the anger while driving, just because this is present for me to share Mm -hmm. that in my experience, like. If those those intense sensations that arise, it's kind of like they're raising their hand. It's like a it's like a flag is being raised, whether it's shame or embarrassment, fear, anger, sadness, any intense emotion, mm-hmm. which emotion is just energy in motion, that energy is yeah. signaling. It's kind of like a, a you know, I think I used this analogy in the prior podcast episode about a toddler throwing a tantrum because it's so helpful to envision that screaming it's like maybe it was getting your attention in other subtler ways and then now it's just like blah 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 it's just blaring and what is it blaring for in my experience it's only ever connection and love and to be Uh met with compassion and to be included into oneness, into wholeness, into source, to be neutralized and to, yeah, to just be enveloped in the heart, in the love that is here and is us. But when we are, when we are living, believing that we are only the anger, that we are only this moment, it Mm -hmm. can, there can be an experience of it being tricky to how do I love what is happening if what is happening is wrong and that's coming from the place of identifying Mm -hmm. this should not be the way it is you were talking about the energy of being misunderstood earlier miss misunderstanding it's kind of like just you know the 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 waves the frequencies are just you know we're just resonating in different places and it's okay it's like the misunderstanding almost like for example with my dad if i tried to have a conversation with him about a particular topic that I was coming in with an agenda of, that would be an effort, potentially, you know, I don't know. But in my mind, I would imagine that that would be an effort because we're resonating at different frequencies. Without the story that it Mm -hmm. would be an effort, it would just be. And in accepting that I resonate where I resonate and he resonates where he resonates and that is okay, Like we could be speaking to completely different languages and that could be a beautiful conversation if I chose to experience it as a Mm -hmm. beautiful conversation. Um, Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm also grateful. I've done that. You have? Yeah. Yes. So whenever I worked in construction, I had these women uh, who would clean my office Mm. and they spoke Spanish. I don't understand a lick of Spanish. I took German and uh, they don't understand English, but we would literally talk Mm. to each other and through body language and love, we understood each other and we loved each other so much. Like I love them. Like seeing them every day was like, they would bring me food sometimes. They were just the sweetest. They always like took special care of me. They knew I was so stressed out. (laughs) They were just such bright lights in my life during like such a hard time. And we didn't even need to speak the same language. Mm -hmm, Because because we just had love. It's just the light. It's just the energy is universal. And that you mentioned about ADHD. This was something else that popped up. If somebody just kind of witnessed and recorded how I live my days, they would probably, you know, somebody, the, the, mm, what's it called? The DSM-5 or just like a psychiatrist or something diagnosing me, they'd probably be like, oh, you're this, this, yeah. this, this, and this. Like I, uh, the, yeah. the categories of, you know, there's so many ways that I could be put in like oh, boxed yeah. or or labeled totally even that. speaking in tongues light language channeling light language yeah 
is speaking in tongues because we're speaking in, you know, yeah, the language of light, the yeah. language of energy, and it could sound funny to yeah, the absolutely. human ears. And I, lo- oh, that just reminds me. I love I do that by myself. Yeah, I love time. what you said about Ray, though. It's like your initial impression was that he was really weird, and then just as your awareness expanded and zoomed out. You came to really love and appreciate him exactly as he was. And yeah, I'm sure that yeah. he's so amazing. Yeah, and unique yeah. and individually him. And yes. us, this conversation yes. is not for everyone. There are specific people. No. I mean, this is this, this is a conversation <laughs> not for everyone. But if you are here with us, if you are listening, it is for you. And it is for me. And it yeah. is for you who and like Michaela and me and all of us the beings of light who are here incarnate listening as well as the beings of light of light who are cosmically fully just like you said arcturians eating their popcorn watching us like they're absolutely here (laughs) with us experiencing this with us Uh, the plants that are in this Mm -hmm. room they are experiencing and part of this conversation with us and what a beautiful conversation it is and has been i could literally i I could literally we could we could talk and we probably have talked for eons (laughs) And so I feel yes. like this is a wonderful place to, yeah, open open the, the space and floor and hand it over to you, Michaela, of what you are offering forth, a glimpse of your unique expression for me to experience and all yeah. of you are listening. Yeah, so I, I did prepare a little, um, let's see, let me pull it up. Um, I came with notes, uh, and so I did want to just go over, um, inner child play and then a little inner child meditation. So, um, I think meditation and grounding and those kinds of things are just such beautiful ways to reconnect with ourselves to go within. But I also think active ways of doing that are so much more fun mm. sometimes. And, and sometimes meditation and grounding are really fun yeah. as well. But I, um, I absolutely love dancing. Mm. And dancing is something that is so hard for people to do because it's so vulnerable. And, but it's something we're all so naturally like inclined to do like you look at babies Mm -hmm. anywhere there's music playing and they're bebopping around just having their best time and it's such a beautiful way to like clear out stuck energy to go from like left brain thinking to right brain thinking to just like anytime i'm i've been doing like really like analytical work um and i'm in that like like fog of just like my brain is spinning and I feel so serious and like analytical every single time I'm like that I have a like impromptu dance party (laughs) because that is that is just like what gets me back to like Mm. you know like I can totally be analytical but I don't I don't want to be all the time um and so how I get like that call myself back is through dancing. And so I just wanted to encourage people, um, to try it. Like if you have a hard time when you get off work and your, your brain is just like, Oh my gosh, like I need some time. Like I used to be the kind of person where I would have to come home and like not talk to anybody and just like needed my decompression time. Mm -hmm. And like now I'll just dance in the car and I don't even (laughs) need that anymore, you know, because like, I can, I can get all of it out and I can, I can feel it all. Or, uh, like my boyfriend and I were having a hard time, um, uh, on Saturday cause like my hypersensitivities were really rough that day. And, um, and he was learning to like navigate that. And so it had been a little weird. And so we did the Cupid shuffle in the, in the kitchen. <laughs> like I haven't done the Cupid shuffle since like, I don't know, 2000 and like, <laughs> like, like, but like it broke up the energy. It was a fun way of like being embodied mm-hmm. again. And so if you're having a hard time, you feel like you're up here and you need to bring it back forward and you really need to like center and 
like it really helps your root chakra and your sacral chakra and like I love the saying like never t- trust a spiritual teacher who won't dance in front of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> because it is such an innate spiritual aspect that we get so disconnected from because we're worried about what mm-hmm. other people will think or whatever but your inner child will thank you and love you if you just get up and dance or do other things that are um more physical that you're that you were inclined to do as a child too so uh, kind of like how we were talking earlier about about doing things you love so like if you were like a make-believer as a kid like you know, dress up and go, go do something like fun that you love, you know, like have a costume party with your friends. Um, if you like to build Legos as a kid, like go buy a really cool Lego set and like build that, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, like get back in your, in your body Mm -hmm. in these like physical, fun, playful ways. Cause you're not too old. Like my mom is, uh, 54 with a doctorate and like she has Lego sets that she I love that. Um, yeah, like really like intricate ones because she was in the Coast Guard and she thinks it's fun that she has her like Coast Guard Legos (laughs) and like you're never too old. Mm -hmm. Like, so I just want, there's not just like one way. So like people are like, oh, I can't meditate or I can't like just stand out there and ground like there are other ways to get embodied mm. and connect to yourself and like trust and then you're in that flow mode like you're in flow when you're doing things you're really passionate about when you have that creative inspiration when you're when you're building something and your mind is able to just like become that blank mm. slate and you're just like doing your thing and like that's when you have access to your your inner self, like God within you, you know? And I just, we live in a world where we're distracted all the time and we're constantly trying to think of the next thing, do the next thing. Like we don't have to have these concrete ways of connecting with ourselves. Like it's not like you can only connect with yourself if you meditate. Like, you can connect with yourself in so many different ways, and through exploring them, you're going to learn how to better connect with yourself. And I really feel like happiness and excitement and anger are the best two ways (laughs) to really learn about yourself and to know what you're meant to do Mm. and what you're here for and how you really feel and how to experience it all. What a beautiful invitation. So, yeah. I can do, if you want me to do the... Yeah, what do you feel? Do you feel inspired? Meditation. Yeah, yeah so I've never done one of these before. So I just like wrote it up before. Well, just um, yeah, open... Just calling in the conscious support of all of the beings of light, all the angels, the guides the beautiful ancestors of land, of lineage, past, present, future, of the stars, Gaia, Earth star herself, sun, moon, planets, higher self, divine light being self, whole self, one self, just arriving here now in support of and in celebration of Michaela guiding and offering forth this beautiful meditation exactly as it is and allowing us to receive and honor her offering and celebrate it as it is. Oh, I love that. So um, I just want a little disclaimer of please do not do this if you're driving. (laughs) Pause and wait till you get home. but for those of you who are in a, a nice, quiet, comfortable space where you can close your eyes, I want you to do that now. And I want you to imagine yourself in a beautiful grassy field. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. There are wildflowers in bloom. 
Spring is here, and the natural world around you is a chorus of life and freshness. Now, some clouds start rolling in like an afternoon, afternoon thunderstorm, and suddenly you see a younger version of yourself off in the distance. In the distance. You, like the sky, are crying. You are young and frustrated because no matter how bright and shiny you feel on the inside, the outside, and the thunderstorms come. And all of the you can'ts are wearing on your little soul. And all of the not good enoughs are like lightning and you just feel defeated. And you look at this younger version of yourself and you recall all of those feelings from whenever you were young. You remember the discouragements and, but you also remember the rainbow that this younger version of yourself has yet to experience. And so you go to your younger self now and you tell them that you want to hold them and you pick them up and you, you put their chest against your chest and you dry the little tears from their eyes and you put forehead to forehead and you transmit all of the memories of the overcoming and the moments you rose above and all of the lessons that you learn and all of the beautiful things that come out of the hardship. You show them all of that that's to come and that they were always safe and that they will always be safe. And you tell them all the, you show them all the times you had fun when you were told to be serious. And you show them all the times you loved when life seemed to be telling you to go and hide. And all the times you were a warrior within, traveling to those deep, dark places and coming out victorious and conquering all of your inner demons. And you look into the eyes of your younger self and you say, always remember who you are. And then your younger self, looking back at you, says, always remember who you are. And I just want you to take a few moments to ponder what that means. I want you to think about who you truly are deep inside, who you have always known, who the little you and the you now have always known yourself to be. And when you're done, I want you to see all of the clouds and rain clear and beautiful grassy fields still there and a glorious rainbow reminding you of all of that color and light that's always been there inside of you. Oh, that was so beautiful. Thank you, Michaela. I'm so (laughs) glad and grateful that truly felt like it was for me that felt like it was specifically for me and if you're listening perhaps you also feel like that was and all of this conversation is specifically for you too because the truth is that it is it is it's I'm speaking to myself through you and we're all speaking to ourselves through each other and even the rain like I'm literally wearing rainbow right now (laughs) and the rainbow and like when I for me in that journey you said seeing the younger self even before the thunderstorms i saw she was like maybe an eight-year-old like curled up and huddled and hiding Mm -hmm. and for the first time yeah really i think a beautiful that the entire time not for the first time the entire time i was coming from my rainbow self i was coming from my spacious heart from my loving heart and just fully embracing her in the love that mm-hmm. is me and including her in the experience rather than being like, you need to go away or I wish you weren't here. It's she's welcome. All of our ages, all of our younger yes. selves, they're so welcome. And I love the question at the end of, oh yeah, the always remember who, like just eye to eye, forehead to forehead. Mm-hmm. And because our younger selves, they're already divine and whole. Everything is within them just as everything is within us in this moment and everything is within our future selves. And that connecting on that level of equanimity is so beautiful. And for me, the the Mm -hmm. image that I had of the, the truth of who I am or remembering who I am 
it was again just a shining star except this time i wasn't yes i was in space but i was here just shining here and then yes. the fact that i'm like literally i'm literally <laughs> i'm literally just like shining with light right now because of the reflection of the yes. sun it's yeah so. i know but this is your time to shine. Like, you literally have a new moon solar eclipse on your birthday. <laughs> oh, my like, gosh. And the sun is coming is over so your shoulder, too. Like, it's just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're glowing. You have your halo <laughs> behind you as the angel that you are. And I love that, like, I'm Scorpio and you're Taurus and you're so bright and shining <laughs> and then I'm more dim. <laughs> like, I've been thinking that this whole time. Like, it's such a, like... We're in the background. And I had this little, I don't Yeah, I can see, see a little screen. light orb. I had this little light on my forehead. <laughs> yes, I don't know. It's been there uh, the whole time. We're just, <laughs> we have such beautiful company of all the light around us. And thank you, Michaela. Yes. That was so beautiful. And thank you for being thank here in the space, for sharing your wonderful yes. messages of love with all of us. It's, yeah, such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you to everyone listening, watching, experiencing, and joining with us now.